Hi, I'm Todd Nathanson. And I'm Lena Morgan. This is a song versus song bonus episode. It's that time of year again. That magical time of year when the foreigners invade our televisions and a small portion of Americans tune in to watch. It is the Eurovision Song Contest 2022. Lena, do you know anything about this more than you did last year? I know not to say anything that I'm not 100% positive is true. I do not know that at all. I, in fact, I have. I think I've learned less about that since last time we podcasted Eurovision, which is a thing as Americans we will never entirely get, although I, I do enjoy it. It's so, fun. It's a fun thing to watch. Lena, since you were saying that maybe we should not be, quote, complete morons about this, we actually have a ringer in the, uh, in the studio today. Introduce yourself, please. Hi there. I'm Nava Wolf. By day, I'm a science fiction and fantasy editor. And by all the rest of the time, I'm a massive Euro fan. Um, I love Eurovision. I follow it from the time of Eurovision New Year, which is September 1st, uh, all the way through the contest, which is in May. Uh, so you're a, a regular season fan. You don't just tune in for the, the playoff finals. That's correct. I have a season pass. <laughs> so... This was a peculiar year for Eurovision. War has broken out in Europe for the first time in, what, 30 years? I don't know. I assume, like, the entire time you've watched it, this, this is a little unprecedented for you. I mean, yes and no. And it's, I mean, this is certainly the first time there has been such a prominent, prominent hostilities on this scale that have obviously come to the attention of Eurovision stage to this degree, but it's not the first time that there's been pretty aggressive hostilities between Eurovision countries. I mean, the hostilities between Azerbaijan and Ar- Armenia have been going on for quite a while. Last year, actually, in junior Eurovision, which is a whole other thing, um, Armenia actually pulled out of junior Eurovision. This was a scandal, but not a scandal, but a, a moment sort of time. A controversy. Um, Armenia pulled out of junior Eurovision because they were at war with Azerbaijan and they just couldn't do it. They couldn't provide the money and the funding to participate in a song contest, even a kid's song contest, um, which as a small sidebar actually had a pretty nice coda because you have to be no older than 14 to represent your country at junior Eurovision. And Armenia's singer Malena, who had dreamed of representing her country at junior Eurovision her whole life, and then was taken away from her because there was a war, she represented her country this year and she won for Armenia. Uh, at the age of 13 and 10 months. For, oh, for junior Eurovision. For junior Eurovision, yeah. Um, well, that's pretty nice. It was pretty nice. And one of the such one of the really cool things also, and maybe I'm getting ahead of ourselves, but one of the really, really interesting things about that is the Armenian and Azerbaijani di- uh, delegations in adult Eurovision don't talk to each other. They don't go near each other. They don't look at each other. It's very hostile. Um, there was a backstage video of the 12-year-old Azerbaijani representative at junior Eurovision congratulating and hugging the 14 year old Armenian winner. And that was like a world peace moment. Oh, I was, I was afraid you're that that was going somewhere darker. And it was like, no, and now it she was, was like, incredible. <laughs> okay. Right? Okay. Like, that's good. Well, like, I mean, it's this dumb joke, right? It's this like ridiculous song contest that has nothing to do with anything real and can't do anything real. and has nothing to do with reality. Is world peace going to happen because a 12 year old Azerbaijani congratulates a 14 year old Armenian? Maybe not now, but maybe in 10 years. Right? I mean, look, it has it has more value than the end of Rocky IV. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, this was definitely the Rocky IV of, uh, of Eurovisions. The war with, Arme- with Ukraine and Russia is definitely unprecedented in a certain way, but Russian hostilities have been a part of the contest for years. There's been issues with Russia and Ukraine. Yeah, like when the what was the last the first time Putin invaded uh, Ukraine was like 2014, right, or something like that. In 2016, Ukraine won the Eurovision Song Contest with a song called 1944, which was sung by a singer named Jamala. Oh, I remember that one. I do remember that one. Yeah, this was a. Big I don't watch all the Eurovisions, but I did watch that one, and I was like, "Whew!" It was it was like a heavy moment. Or yeah. So one of the rules of the Eurovision Song Contest is that the lyrics can't be political. The songs can't. Be political. <laughs> Absolutely. There's a billion ways around that. So she sang the song 1944 that included lines like, they came into our home, they took my children, they spilled my blood, which was about what happened to her grandmother in 1944, but it was actually about Crimea. That's what it was about. It was about Crimea. 
but it wasn't. It was historical, so it was allowed. And she won, which pissed off Putin. Like, yeah, she won. An American election, but he could not buy a Eurovision contest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, Ukraine won for a subtweet in uh, 2016. And it was a massive scandal. I mean, not a massive scandal, but for Russia. It was It was a thing, yeah. It was a thing. And then the following year, Russia um, Eurovision was hosted in Kiev because the winner is the host country the following year. And Russia chose a singer who had illegally entered Crimea in 2015 so that Ukraine would kick her out and it would look bad when they did, which it did because they wouldn't let her in. Ukraine, um, the European Broadcast Union said she can participate via televote or you can choose somebody else. Russia said, no, thank you. Flounced out of the contest, didn't participate. And that's why Bulgaria came in second, because their singer grew up in Moscow and took the Russian voting bloc. Oh, wow. I'm a tiny bit versed in Eurovision. So I know that they, even in the grandest days of post, you know, uh, post-Cold War world peace, there's always some kind of tension going on. Like, or not even just tension. It's just like everyone votes for their buddy countries. Uh, UK votes for Ireland and vice versa. Belgium votes for the Netherlands. I could be getting this way wrong, but the point is people, they are there, friends. There, are, there is a lot of buddy voting. The well, most famous is Greece and Cyprus. If you would like to know. Yeah. They literally always vote for each other. Well, this is spoilers, because we haven't even talked about this year's. Spoilers, Ukraine won in a landslide. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask the panel, how do we feel about this? Because this is obviously a political vote. It was great. That song was good. Had the world not been in the state that it was in, I still think that they would have been in the top three as like in my heart. Right. I can when I say that, I mean, of all the songs I listened to, I would say that the very least it's in the top five um, that they won is not surprising. And I cannot imagine a soul um, on Earth except for Vladimir Putin being upset about that. I think there have been people upset about it. I am not one of them. Wow. I am not one. I, I saw some angry comments on Reddit from a, a few of uh, uh, Brits who were unhappy that they didn't win. They came in second. And it, I mean, like the, the vote was for because Ukraine is the lovable underdog of the world right now. Yeah, but also like, I, OK, listen, I, I do not wish to tell anybody that they cannot have the feelings that they have. But mm-hmm. for the two years previous, just just to be clear. Did not the UK come in dead last? <laughs> Do we not watch last year as the guy who was representing them? He got like numpwa, like nothing, like <laughs> zero for both, right? Zero from the jury, zero mm-hmm. from from the world. I will say I have never seen anything as wild in my entire life. That's probably an exaggeration, but not by much as the United Kingdom winning the jury vote last night. That was that blew my mind. That blew my mind. Every year, the same thing happens where the UK announces their singer and all the UK fans get really hyped and get really excited and say, this is our year, guys. It's happening. They're really great. The song is amazing. We're doing it. And then they do terribly. And then there's like a round of interviews where the UK goes, it's political and they hate us. And no one at this point, they hate us and Brexit. And we should drop out of Eurovision and then rinse and repeat the next year. It happens every year. And the fact that the United Kingdom won the televote, I just sat there like my mind was blown. I couldn't believe it. I mean, Dan Ryder did a great job. His song is powerful. It's a little goofy, um, but he did a great job with his with his with his performance. That's an Ed Sheeran song, isn't it? Or at least Ed co-wrote it. Oh, is it? I didn't actually didn't know that. See, I, I believe that he co-wrote that song. So I don't really know the full story about the UK. I only know that. They haven't really ranked in a meaningful way since like 98. The years we've watched it, you and me, Lena, like they're always in like a reverse metal position, you know, like if they're not the last, they're with, they're on the podium for last. Like they get the bronze or the silver of, of being bad at Eurovision. It fe- Here's what I remember from last year when we watched it. Uh, I should have looked up the, the person's name who was actually up on the day of the uh, song. But I seem to recall that there was a bit of like open hostility and bitterness in general towards Eurovision almost. <laughs> like like he was up there and like kind of just like, I'm, I know I'm going to do badly. You guys hate us anyway, so who gives a fuck? Kind of like throwing deuces a little bit. Say that. Yeah. I think that James Newman, who was the UK's rep last year, did as good a job as he possibly could with the staging that he was given and the song that he had. Um, I think he brought 100%. I think he seemed like a really lovely guy who was having a good time and there to represent his country. 
I do think that the UK has sent reps for the last few years who have been lovely, who have done their best and been enthusiastic and brought the songs that they were given to bring and done the best with the material they had. The BBC has never really taken it seriously and they've never really done like James Newman was lovely and the song was fine. It wasn't my favorite song, but it wasn't my favorite song. But they put giant trumpets next to him for no reason. Why? I don't know. It was called Embers. On a contest known for pyrotechnics, was there any fire? No. <laughs> Why? That is weird. Okay, I stand corrected. Um, I think it's also worth noting that, I mean, I have no idea how much this impacts Eurovision, but the deal with Sam Ryder is that he's a big TikTok boy. Yes. That's like, that's his really big thing is that he got huge on TikTok. If you watch, there's like compilations of him singing other people's songs. He has an incredible voice, but that's like, I think a big source of how he's become known in the world prior to this. And I have no idea how much that impacts anything else. I mean, I'm, cer- I'm certain it has an impact, but what's interesting to me, putting the TikTok thing aside or rather leaning into it, is that he did great in the televote. I'm not saying he didn't. He did like, I mean, he came in second in the whole contest, but he really nailed it in the jury vote. And that's what's really interesting to me. What was interesting to me is like, I I only tuned in for the finals. I had no idea what was going on prior to this. So they were all walking out. It was like, here's our, our contestants for today. And uh, Sam walks out representing the UK and the crowd erupted. And I was shocked because me not knowing anything about this this year, uh, I was used to the UK sucking like they have for the last 20 years and being super unpopular. And uh, I was really shocked. I was like, oh, my God, is a uh, UK actually good this year? And they uh, they came in second, which was, you know, pretty impressive considering the, the song is not very good. And I... the performance was not very good either. I'm, wow. I said it. All right. <laughs> so. I, I just want to quote a friend of mine who said something that I thought was really smart um, about sort of the difference between a televote and a jury vote. There's a Twitter user. Her handle is Ellie, Ellie underscore made. She's really smart. She says a lot of interesting things about Eurovision. Thank you. Things that I really enjoy and appreciate. And she said on Twitter, the jury ranking asks, what was the best impression, right? Like what was the coolest? And the televote says, what made you feel something, right? The televote is people, right? It's just you. It's me. It's like when you're watching, the jury watches the show and then they rank it and they give it a lot of thought and they say, well, which one seemed the most impressive? Which one seemed the most powerful? Which one seemed the most interesting? The televote is people sitting at home on their couch in the 45 minutes that you have to pick up your phone and vote being inspired by the song that like gutted them or they that made them jump up and dance or have or laugh or get excited to like pay money on their phone to vote for something. So that's sort of the difference between where, like the flavors of those two votes. Right. That's why Moldova did so well. And that's, that's and why that, Moldova and that really, nailed the televote. The tele- that, yeah. That's, that's, and I think that kind of tracks, Todd, just because I remember when we were watching, you made such a big stink about them. You were, it, you are as in your feels as, as I've seen you get in Eurovision about Moldova. You, I believe, texted me, that's it. I'm all in on Moldova. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take your word for it on what the jury was voting for but like what it seemed like to me was the panel was deciding is like which one would most likely be an actual like song you could listen to outside of eurovision like which one would you hear on the radio and not turn it off and uh, a group like moldova or even ukraine uh that seems like they would suffer the most in that kind of thing because see there's there's two ways to watch this first are you watching for good music or are you watching for eurovision I'm watching for Eurovision. I'm watching to see something that I cannot see anywhere else. I want something wild and wacky. I was. Well, then that's why. So that's why you didn't like Sam Ryder then, because I think that Sam's whole thing is that he is that he has a little bit like it was already getting radio play, wasn't it? It seems to be getting popular. Yeah. Like, I don't. But the thing is, I don't listen to that song and say that doesn't sound like Eurovision to me. Like, it's still that still sounds like I mean, I know that was sort of. His argument that, you know, they asked him, why did, why do you think the UK has not done well in the past? And he sort of cast aside the idea that it was a Brexit thing. And he said that he thought that the UK would either try too hard to be Eurovision-y mm-hmm. or I don't, I don't even know what else. But his idea was, let's just make a good song and try and like perform it as well as we can and leave it at that. But 
I think that there is something kind of Eurovision-y about Spaceman to me. On on more listens, um, I, I'm not as uh, down on it as I was the first time I heard it. I was just like pumped to see what UK did, and I, I thought it was pretty blah. But uh, I, th- I think the hook is good. The choruses, I'm not really, I mean, uh, the verses I'm not so into. I don't like that willowy Ed Sheeran type kind of thing. It's not, f- it's not for me. It's not my favorite song. I will say going into the contest, my two favorites were, I, I had two distinct favorites and I was sort of on the fence about which one I really wanted to win the most. And I kind of wanted both of them to win. Like, uh, like us all. Yeah. So the one winner of, them, of our hearts. Yeah. So one of them was Ukraine without a question. Uh, yeah. And I obviously have more to say about that. Um, but the other was Sweden. That song was great. So Sweden is a really interesting one for me because Sweden is not usually a country that I love in Eurovision. Um, Sweden has a history. I don't know how much you know about Sweden's Eurovision history aside from like ABBA, but <laughs> Sweden is a highly like they they put out well packaged pop every year. That's what they do. They have a massive contest called Melodi Festivalen which they, that's their national final that they use to pick their Eurovision song and tons of stuff participates in, Mel, in Melfast. But what comes out on the other side is almost always highly packaged pop. That's very respectable. And you look at it and you're like, I respect what you're doing. I appreciate the artistry of the pop song you just did. And it does nothing for me personally. Every year, Sweden sends a dude. Usually it's a dude. It's some sort of man singing some sort of song. And I'm always like, cool. Good for you, Sweden. You did a thing. And it's quality, and I don't particularly care for it. And this year they sent Cornelia, and I heard Hold Me Closer, and I expected it to be just another one of those songs. And it just gut punched me in the heart. It's so simple and so raw and emotional and gorgeous. And I listened to it, and I was just like, this this feels like a winner. Like, this feels like arcade. It feels like something that's going to live forever. For me, I usually don't fall in love with the Eurovision songs that feel like pop that feel like non, like, like you said, right? Like, are you listening for a great song that's going to get radio play? Or are you going to fall look, look, looking for Eurovision? I'm usually looking for Eurovision. And for some reason, Sweden got me anyway. So, you know, there's space for both in the contest. Yeah, that was, a, that was my reaction too. I was looking, listening to this and I was like, this is not Eurovision enough for me. So like on this stage, I'm not feeling it, but like, I, this is a good song. This is a really good song. I might listen to this one afterwards. Whereas I can't really imagine uh, listening to the Ukraine after this, even though I really liked their performance. You know, you say that, but one of the like songs that really caught on in a big way, mostly in the TikTok world last year, actually was Shum, which is Ukraine, which is also Ukraine. It was Goe's song, which was also like folk white noise, white music. Um, and it was also sort of weird and unusual and the sort of thing that you wouldn't think you'd listen to. And it really caught on. It became like a massive TikTok hit. Well, if, uh, if Ukraine catches on and I find myself listening to it more and more, I'm not going to complain. I liked their performance a lot. I um, like, Wait, before we go any further, there was one thing I wanted to do and it kind of got away from us. But um, Todd and I were talking right before we started about songs that did not make it, countries that did not ugh. make it to the final. Mm-hmm. And you, Todd, you had one that you had heard that you listened to that you really liked and I had one that I really liked. And I kind of want to talk about those and see if, Nava, if you had one too or more than one maybe that you thought could have made it to the finale. I was told to check out Latvia, so I did, <laughs> and I liked it a lot. I'm not sh- like how how who decides who makes it in for the semifinals? Is that just a, a panel vote? No, it's the same as the grand final. So it's half jury vote and half televote. Okay, well then I don't know who's to blame for this one, but like I would have absolutely loved to have Latvia on the main show. They deserved it. It was kind of a goofy song. It's called "Eat Your Salad." It's about the importance of eating your vegetables. It was fun, and it sounded like nothing else anyone did that night. They could have gone through. I didn't quite see why they didn't. I, I guess they were just outvoted by Banana. In the end, it was Banana that took it. <laughs> There's only one, uh, only only one, one comedy song, song about eating, eating fruits and vegetables, I guess. Sorry. that's just how those, yeah. I don't make the rules, but apparently that's one of them. Um, I watched um, my favorite part of researching for the songs that didn't make it was discovering that um, – Local news is the same the world over. <laughs> Just a lot of people that you're like, wow, they put you on television. All right. Um, I watched like like Ireland in the morning or something, and they were so mad <laughs> about Brooke with that oh, not rich Brooke. not making it. And I will tell you something. Um, I 
as silly as I thought the presentation was where they were making fun of Italy from last year, calling them like a gimmick. I was like, oh, if you say so. Uh. But um, I do think that that's rich is great. Like it really kind of, it was like Eurovision Kim Petras to me. I was like, oh, I, I would really listen to this. I would like, I would, I would sneak this right in with Slut Pop. Like it's a it's, delightful it's, breakup song from 1994. It's perfect. Yes, that's why. Yes, so you've you've honed in on exactly why I specifically like it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I thought for sure um, that if it had been up to me, if I was in control of Eurovision, then Ireland would have made it through. Like I don't care where they would have placed, but I think they belong in the finale. Nava, whomst, uh, uh, if there is one, you can name as many as you like, though. There, there were there were two serious ones that really broke my heart. Well, three, I guess. We lost Albania in the first semifinal, which was sad for me. Albania is such a great European country. They bring the Baltics every year, the Balkans every year, and they're they sing in Albanian, which is great. And this year, their their artist Ronella was just the queen of over the top power ballad nonsense. Is the only way I can describe it. The song made no sense. The presentation made no sense. There was a lot of yelling and dancing and gyrating, and it was so high energy and so good and bad at the same time. And I'm very sad that it wasn't at a grand final. So pour one out for, for my queen Ronella. Um, but the bigger ones, like the real gut punches to my heart um, were from the second semifinal, which made some, some decisions were made in that semifinal. We lost Georgia, which was a great, great tragedy for me personally. Georgia this year sent a group called Circus Mercus. <laughs> we're basically. I love it already. You do. You really do. They're the Georgian Brit pop version of they might be giants. Oh. Only way I can describe them. And they're so great and so weird. And we needed them and we lost them. And I'm never going to be okay about it. And the biggest one, the one that I will never get over until the day that I die, that like this is my greatest Eurovision tragedy of all time, I'm pretty sure, um, was San Marino. Uh, I don't know if you sent Flow Ride again this year. No. So San Marino is my favorite Eurovision country. Hands down, because they just bring chaos every year. And their chaos, I mean, it's a country of, I must remind you, 33,000 people. It's a microstate in the middle of Italy. And yet somehow they bring chaos every year, the best chaos. They're so wonderful. They're absolutely out of their minds. And I adore them. Uh, last year, they sent American rapper Flo Rida along with their singer, Sen Hit, who is wonderful. Um, and this year, oh God, this year. So a small bit of backstory, if you'll indulge me. Um, Italy has a contest called San Remo, which takes place in February. San Remo Music Festival is the original contest upon which Eurovision was modeled. Eurovision was inspired by San Remo. Uh, and San Remo is my favorite week of the year, maybe even more than Eurovision. I love it so much. I love it so much. Like Eurovision and San Remo are neck and neck for me. There was one point in which there, was, there were, quote, irregular voting patterns. Oh, yeah, that's happening. I don't know. So the thing is, I have no idea how much that matters because, again, I'm a complete outsider. So it's not really clear and the full picture isn't there yet. And nobody really knows the answer. This is a developing scandal. Like, stay tuned because this will <laughs> more details will arise. I mean, Euro fans are obsessive and they are on it. There's this Twitter hand, uh, Twitter user named um, Euro Bruno in 2019. He noticed that there was discrepancies in the Belarusian jury results. How can you know that? So actually, in 2019, the Belarusian jury got disqualified from sharing their results because one of the jurors leaked results early. Ah. So to do that, there are just there are like contingencies in place where instead of using the Belarusian jury, they created like an aggregate results from like other neighboring countries and sort of mushed them all together to create like a fake Belarusian jury result. That's not cool at all. It happens all the time. San Marino, for example, is too small to have a televote. Because there's not enough people, so just <laughs> get a fake one from San Marino. I'm not kidding. Every year. Why do they have to have a fake vote? So this Twitter user, Euro Bruno, he noticed that there were some weird discrepancies in the fabricated Belarusian jury results, and did like a whole like conspiracy theory Twitter thread about it. That no, like for no one, right? Just for like random Euro fans on Twitter, and then it got traction, and then the European European Broadcast Union was like, "Yeah, we effed up." She was right. We did it backwards and it changed the results of the whole thing. Um, not the winner, but like the winner of the of the televote. Like it legitimately changed rankings in wow. the final votes were tabulated. So 
like Euro fans are on it. They're going to figure this one out. But apparently there were six jury. There are six juries, jury votes, six jur- countries, juries, votes that there are irregularities in them. Turns out Russia won after all. Well, if you were watching last night, you saw that at least three countries, they didn't go to their representative. They went to Martin Austin. Oh, yeah, that's right. So that's in the past when they like try to reach a country and have technical difficulties. They just come back to them because it's a really big deal. To be- yeah, I was curious about that. They were like, well, we'll just read what they, they read the votes anyway. And then they just moved on. And those poor people never got to be on on camera. So apparently. No. I, at, at, like, yes, but that guy with the like, equality T-shirt that he wore last year also was there and <laughs> was able to go on and on. Good grief. <laughs> yeah. So when I was watching, I was like, that's brutal, man. Like, you're not even going to try it again. Like, this try the line again. Like maybe they were busy. I don't know. No, apparently those three juries were unwilling to read their results live because they were fabricated because they didn't use their juries votes. Wow. That's crazy. So I don't want to speak crazy for this stupid little song contest. I don't want to speak too out of school here because I really don't know all the specifics and not sure anyone does at this point. There's a lot of speculation and question marks. Um, So I really don't like, I don't want to like say the wrong thing and then have everybody mad at me when we find out the truth in like a day. But there's some hinky business going on. Unbelievable. Hanging Chad bullshit. Can't believe it. Uh, that's Stop the a- count. Ask, <laughs> ask your parents, kids, about the hanging chat. Um, so, all right. We've really, I think we've, we've gone and done a lot of the, the, the pre, pre and the controversies in the lead up. Um, let's talk about where things sort of wound up, what songs we really liked, performances that we really enjoyed, Stuff maybe we, you know, like, look, I try not to be too, too mean. There were a couple performances where I was like, how did this make it? How did it? I mean, like, I don't, let's just get that out of the way. Let's, let's, <laughs> let's, we'll strafe negative. If you don't, maybe we can find like a little, like from this point to this point. If you don't want to listen to us be jerks, that's completely fair. Um, yeah. Do you mind if I just get it out yeah. of the way? Go Please. for it. Fucking Germany. Holy <laughs> shit. That was. Uh, like there's so there's sort of two that really stuck out to me that one just because like right at the start like I don't maybe that's not how it usually sounds but that man sounded like he was going to throw up <laughs> like he sounded like truly like the first note out of his mouth sounded I thought there was vomit coming out of his mouth it sounded so weird which I like I listened to the the, the I watched the music video like the official music video and it wasn't like that so maybe he was just really fucking nervous, which fair, but I just, there was this focus on the fact that like his father's from America and I think his dad's from like eight mile. So he decided he was going to lean in on trying to sound like Eminem. I don't, I don't want Eminem. At I will say for the record, not in poor Malik's defense or anything, because the song is exactly what it is, but <laughs> and he made a choice this year and they were very open about it where their national final when they were picking a song they're like the thing we're going for is radio playability and they chose seven songs to compete that were all the most forgettable generic songs you've ever heard in your entire life and everyone was like yeah why do this at all why what what point are you having oh uh, man i can totally imagine uh this getting a lot of radio play in in you know maybe not here but in certain places and it would make me miserable each and every time because it sounds like the exact kind of garbage that gets played too much on the goddamn radio. Yeah, I, I would I would literally say if this had gotten radio play in America and we got to the end of the year and you did one of your worst of lists, Todd, it would be on it. Like this is I a mean, real worst of end of the year song. For, I mean, for I, me. I certainly hated Arcade. And then two, a year later, that was everywhere on the radio. So <laughs> uh, hold on. I, I want to read this. Quote, I was reading about it on the Wikipedias, and I have to read this. According to Harris, Rock Stars was written after Harris watched his favorite episode of The Office finale. No. What? (laughs) Whose favorite episode of The Office is the finale? Whose favorite episode of The Office is post-Michael Scott? No. (laughs) I didn't even know how to respond to that. It was inspired by a quote from Andy... When he said, I wish there was a way to know you're in the good old days before you've actually left them. Uh, well, it's been a great episode, everybody. <laughs> I, That's li- the, 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 there was literally a Macklemore song that was probably uh, that inspired by that quote already. So it's called Good Old Days. And it's, oh, man. Todd, Todd do man. you have one that stood out? Because, you know, I have multiple ones um, and I don't want to rob the Rock mic bottom. the whole time. 
I mean, I watch Eurovision for it to be the its most Eurovision. So for me, the worst ones were uh, usually ballads. I really did not like Australia. I really did not like uh, Poland. Did not like Switzerland. Did not like Belgium. Those were all ballads. They were all by Sam Smith sounding guys that I just did not feel at all. I remember Australia sticking out at the time because that was the guy um, in the veil, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, so emotions either really work on me or really don't. And clearly, this meant a lot to this person that they made it through. And I, it meant enough that I'm not going to say anything other than I did not particularly care for it. I don't. I don't want to. That just like I don't. Sometimes a person feels their feeling so hard that I'm like, I, I can't like I, it wasn't my favorite. I would put it towards the bottom, but I'm not going to be like, and let me go off on a tirade. Now, uh, Switzerland, on the other hand, old boily Irish, as I <laughs> as I came to call him because he had like indie, like indie girl voice. Yeah. You know what Switzerland is? Here's the thing about Switzerland. If you're wondering where you heard that song before, I can tell you. It's every time you watch a Pixar movie and it gets to the sad part and they play the sad song. <laughs> <laughs> the sad part of Toy Story 5. And a terrible person, and I'll just confess this for everybody here, when he got zero televote points, I cackled. I was like, I guess <laughs> I do cry. <laughs> <laughs> they yep. sure do. That's the it. name of the song was Boys Do Cry. For yes, it that's was. That's the joke. It sure was. Yeah. In yes, case we didn't that, explain that, that getting one. zero audience points felt good and i know that I, that's mean but i i really did not like that song i was, there was, I was really about shocked it. that germany didn't come dead last in the televote uh they got, but, they got uh, six, but then six switch- votes right yeah. for the yeah they got six televotes and zero jury votes uh i yeah. think austria pulled it out for him to give him a, a bone germany but no one no one came through for switzerland and uh in hindsight i was like actually yeah that makes sense yeah, so i'm fine. noticing Here, like you're talking about all of these ballads that didn't work for you. Nobody has mentioned Azerbaijan's ballad. It's so funny because Todd specifically said that he didn't like it during the performance. And then when I asked him about it, he had no memory of it at all. Thank you. It's the least memorable song out there. It's the most forgettable song. And for some reason, a whole bunch of juries gave it their due to law, which makes me think that maybe those juries were bought. All right. <laughs> what, what? Azerbaijan's got a lot of oil money. A sidebar, they released the... um. The numbers from the from the semifinals. So mm-hmm. see like how, how things actually went down in the semis. And Azerbaijan in their semi got where was it exactly? There it is. They got a whole bunch of jury votes and zero televotes. Not like five, zero, none. No poi. Yeah, yeah, that doesn't um, seem shady at all. But what what do I know? Yeah, I don't I don't remember. Uh, I don't remember it. I do not so remember it in my notes. I'm so glad nobody mentioned it because I kept forgetting it. Every time I wasn't listening to it, I did not remember it existed. I remember the performance because there was one guy singing on one side of the bleachers and then one man dancing on the other side of the bleachers. That was it. That's all I remember. I don't really remember anything about the song. I just remember that that was the, there were two guys and one did a dance and the other sang a sang and that was it. My notes just say it's a raspy voice ballad and it was sniffly. It was called Fade to Black. And that is exactly what my memory of it did. So. (laughs) Uh, All right. Did you have any other ones that you did not like, Nava? I have one that I deeply, truly hate with all of my heart and soul. I'm ready. I just like have like a hiss reaction every time I see that. And that's Finland. I hate Finland. (laughs) Why? I like Finland a lot. So much. This is like a flames on the side of my face kind of hatred. Why? Why? And there's a combination, first of all, and I guess this isn't technically fair, but I'm just going to say it anyway, because this is what happens when you're a massive Euro fan. But uh, Finland's national final had a singer named Bess who had a song called Rum Pum Pum, which was a banger. It was so good. It was basically like Harley Quinn and her revenge pyromaniac crew. And it was sung in Finnish and it was amazing. And they could have had it. And instead they gave us this and I will never forgive him for it. Never. Not uh, I mean, that song was good. I, I liked it a lot. Finland? Finland, yeah. No! I, I was, yeah, yes. Well, I, no, I, Jezebel? People said that to me on Twitter, too, when I said I liked them on... I, I don't see oh, the big... No. I mean, like, if you were complaining that they you know, brought in some ringers, because that's like an actual known band. The yeah, Rasmus. from like a bajillion years ago. But also, this song is like 
mildly misogynist and <laughs> just a little transphobic. It's very bad. I didn't like I it at all. Eh. Uh, I, I wasn't paying close attention to what the lyrics mm. were. I know it's called, I remember it was called Jezebel. And, uh, you know, any song called Jezebel, yes, is going to be mildly sexist. But I, I, I missed the rest you, you of said, it. You so said, I, was, I like this. And I said, do you like the 1980s? I do. That was that was I think really the only big input I had other than that I told the obvious joke that it was that he looked like Georgie from Yeah, I'm sure that was deliberate. It, yes, it was literally the joke that everybody made. So there I can't I can't haha. Yeah, yeah he, he was dressed in a raincoat with a yellow balloon for some reason. Okay, so I have a question if I can throw one at you guys. What were your right. thoughts on France? I so well first of all, um I think it's worth taking note of the fact that um it was shocking where they wound up. Yeah. Well, it was shocking. like third to last, they, right? No. Last. Second. Second to last. They were they were second to last. Germany was in dead last with six. France had seventeen by the end. Seventeen whole points. I was blown away. And I had no again, as somebody that really doesn't know Eurovision very well, I thought, well, it's not that the song was bad. I didn't think so. I thought, is it because they're not singing in French? Did that piss somebody off? Like, what happened there? I don't, it was totally shocking to me. Okay, they're like, it was, su- I'm going to pronounce this wrong. It was sung in Breton, the French Canadians of France, basically. basically. They speak their own language, and they sang it in that language, which was interesting. And it was like this pagan dance thing. It was like, uh, and I remember I, it was a little loud for me. It was like a little headachey and I wasn't a huge fan, but I was like, well, they're going for it. They're uh, really going for it. Cause you know, sometimes the big five nations who get a bye week all the way to the finals, they, sh- people resent them for it. And also they just get lazy with it. This wasn't lazy. That's what was so shocking for me. Like I remember, I feel like France often does like a very French Eiffel tower performance. Um, which like, like last year, um, when they sent Barbara Harvey, who did her chanson and she did real well and she came in second and like, it was very beautiful and very, very impressive. And it did very little for me personally. I just was like, okay, it's sung. And so when they sort of deviated from that and did this really interesting thing, I was like international final. I got really excited. Um, I thought France is really bringing it this year. They're doing something really interesting. And I've been excited for France since then. So seeing it like, land so poorly i was just sort of curious what people who haven't been like people who've come to the contest sort of fresh felt when they saw it about where it ended up because that was shocking to me yeah i thought you know a lot of people liked it more than i did but i was for me this is like this is a mid-table performance i i appreciate that they were going for it i didn't really feel it but i i liked the energy and i i was really surprised that it did so badly i didn't really get it like maybe yeah. maybe the maybe it was just like too hard to get into for people. It's in a language no one speaks except a small portion of France. Yeah, but wasn't there a song that was sung in, in, at least partly in Latin? Yeah, a language no one speaks. Well, um, when you're ready, we can talk about Serbia. I have lots to say about Serbia. Oh, I can't wait. Um, but uh, yes, I I was surprised that it did as badly as it did. I think I liked it a lot precisely because it seemed like something that would be in a folk horror movie. Yeah. Like, that's why I liked it. Like, that's exactly what I want. I want, I'm like, great. This could be in like the wicker man. Like that's, it's got the right vibe for me. That's, that's my genre. Uh, well, like, where do we want to go from here? Do we want to go with the wacky ones or? I guess we could do some, we could do some wacky stuff. Um, I mean, there's not uh, like, I, I'm trying to think how many that like were in the finale were really wack. Cause like Norway really sticks out. Yeah. They went full comedy on that yeah. one. I liked it while I was watching it. I'm not. But, ju- like, here, like, but here's the thing: Can you imagine having to listen to that more than once, or having to be in the room with those guys the whole time? <laughs> like, I just feel like it would wear me out. Here's the thing: You have to appreciate, and every time I think about it, it just blows my mind. Norway has a national final called Melody Grand Prix, which is also much like Sweden's Melodi Festival, and like this like long storied respectable music competition to pick their finalists. And there's real musicians in that thing, like a lot of them real serious musicians who make real serious music and all of those real serious musicians this year lost to wolf banana that (laughs) happened norway did that on purpose somehow i don't know somehow it happened they 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 were trying to make their what does the fox say they thought Uh, just just in case netflix decides to make a sequel to their eurovision movie but this time (laughs) about norway 
you, they would have you plenty of material I, to use. Yes. You do know, I assume, of the best, um, the most popular um, subwoofer identity rumor, I'm assuming. Oh, I don't know. So I know because when we watched this on the NBC streaming app that they mentioned in passing that there's been a lot of discussion as to who it is behind the mask. I don't know anything about that other than that's. So no thing. one knows. No one knows for sure. But I'm definitely in the Elvis truther camp. Um, El- the, um, the Elvis soccer brothers are the ones behind. What does the Fox say? Those are, they're a Norwegian comedy duo of brothers who made that song. What does the Fox say? Which became this massive sensation. So I've always wanted Elvis at your and Always, always, always. I've always thought they'd be like the perfect joke entry. Um, so because of that, in my heart, Subwoofer is Elvis. There was a moment right before the, the, the semifinals, actually, that like blew the minds of every single Euro fan and everyone just sort of lost their minds collectively. Where So it's two the two wolves and they have their DJ astronaut. All three of them keep their masks on and you never know who any of them are. So there was a moment when someone caught some like backstage footage of DJ astronaut taking off his helmet. And underneath the helmet was Tix, who represented Norway at Eurovision last year. The Angel I remember. I remember Tix. And everyone collectively lost their mind. It was like, what? It's Tix? Tix is back? What does this mean? But it can't be Tix because Tix read Norway's points. Yes, he did. So he couldn't have been on the stage. So no one knows anything anymore. Here's what I'll say about about what does the fox say, just very quickly, for people that want to know how the sausage gets made. Todd uh, likes when holiday seasons come around, despite the fact that I don't celebrate Christmas, will buy me terrible gifts, either that or for my birthday, and bought me 50 50 cents perfume once, or cologne or whatever it was. And I believe in revenge at one point, I bought him the book, what does the fox say? I think it's uh, right behind me right now somewhere. Good. You deserved it. Um, <laughs> I haven't. I think what does the fox say is hilarious and weird, but I remember you despising it and I bought it for you as a punishment gift. I don't remember despising it. I definitely remember you getting it as a gift and being very annoyed. That's what I remember. And I was and I was proud of myself because I guess I'm a bad friend. Anyway, there it is. Uh, there it is. What does, what does the fox say? It goes, yip, uh, yip, 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 the, yip. The, the world may never know. All right. So I, there's a couple that I feel like we should talk about. Like Serbia feels like it's it's sort of one of the last. We should talk about, I feel almost like them, UK and Ukraine are like the big ones. Yeah, that's to, are like really big to talk about, especially since we already kind of touched on Sweden. Um, I would love to talk about Spain. I would love to talk about Spain. Let's talk. Let's talk about Spain. Todd, I seem to recall you thinking that that was too slick. This was Chanel yeah. slow mo, booty hypnotic. <laughs> it has a real name, but I have only can only think of it as booty hypnotic <laughs> because that is the most prominent lyric in the in the song. It is. It's slow mo. Slow mo. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I don't know. I was like, this is like a real professional performance. This is like. So, you know, this is like a, a, a seasoned pop star. Like this is like seeing like Dua Lipa. But not or, but but not really, though. Isn't the deal that she's more an actor than she is an actress? But Spain basically yeah. went, you don't need Shakira. We have Shakira at home. And then they brought. Yeah. Yeah. No, Spain brought it this year and they have not brought it. In the, like they've internally selected for several years now and they have not done super well. And even before that, when they had a competition, they, once again, have not done super well in a while. And they had an amazing national final competition where they really brought quality and they brought some incredible songs. Um, and Chanel was kind of a shock winner, actually. Um, no one sort of expected. That was a different scandal for another day. Um, it, was, it wasn't my favorite of the songs, but I have nothing but immense respect for it. I mean, to be able to sing and dance at the same time the way she does... She's badass. Like she deserved every one of those votes. Yeah, I was. I wasn't surprised it did, uh, she did so well. I, I just didn't quite feel it. Like, like because it was such like a, I don't know how to put it. Like mainstream professional thing. I was like, I stopped judging it on Eurovision standards, and I was like, well, would I want to listen to this? And the quite answered, like I probably wouldn't, honestly. Oh, I would listen to that song all the time. That really hit yeah. it for me. That's got that very that's, like, that is that's your style of, of song, definitely not mine. Yeah, I mean it's it's very two thousands. I think that the thing that took it over the top, like I thought it was a very good song. I think it was an exquisitely perfect 
performance of that song. Mm -hmm. Like, it was so good. The costumes were amazing. The dancing was amazing. The singing was really, I just, I thought everything, like, when you say slick, I think, right, she did it perfectly. I have never seen her perform that anything except 110%. And I've seen her do it multiple times. I saw her twice at the national final. I saw her like at, you know, various Eurovision pre-parties. I, I, it's just one of those things where I can't begrudge anyone who wanted to give that one the, the full du a pois. It, it just wasn't for me. You know what blew my mind though, is that I liked that so much and that did very well. But there was another song that reminded me a lot of that one that did not do numbers at all this year, which was um, which was Yamame by Romania. Uh, I, I, that I was amazing. The- Listen, I appreciate an ultra crop top on a very muscular man. Like mm-hmm. that's that is top tier entertainment. They're like, whatever. Those nipples are useless. No one's going to shame those nipples if they're seen. Let's show them. Well, I Romania suffered from a going second and be going That's for true. Spain. Like by the end of the night, I couldn't remember Romania at all. I had to rewatch it uh, just a second ago. And oh, I, like, I did oh, not yeah, forget them at all. They there really was an amazing blink and you'll miss it moment when Mika, who was one of the hosts last night, was mm-hmm. through the green room just being like this act and this act. And he was on here's Spain and pointed. Oh, out. yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh, ouch. Yep. I watched him do it. <laughs> That's okay. He, he he had a bunch of songs I really loved 15 years ago. <laughs> we are golden. What did you guys think of Italy? I was really underwhelmed. Meh. So this is really interesting to me. I mean, this is one of those like divides between um, Euro fans, like, like diehard Euro fans and people who come to it on the night. Because when it won San Remo, this song was amazing. I mean, like Brividi means shivers, right? So it was a shivers moment. Um, and it was powerful and it was emotional and like, I was expecting it to like really hit. Um, and the people I was watching it with who are not massive Euro fans, they're people just like you guys who come to it on the night. They also found it really underwhelming. And to be honest, I found their performance pretty underwhelming. Also, like, I think they would just do a good job. Well, they were off key at the start. Yeah. They were sort of pitchy. Um, it, it was really shocking. It was a, it was a pretty sedate performance. I feel like. It wasn't a, it was, you know, just two guys singing to each other. And uh, I'd be curious, like if you went back and you watched their performance from San Remo, if you would have. Yeah, I bet I would have a different. It just seemed like a bad performance on the night. That was really. Blanco didn't participate in one of the rehearsals because he was touring. He's been on a tour. So that for his voice, like, I just don't think that they were like in their peak performance. Uh, Todd, do you want to talk about Moldova? Good old Moldova, justice for Moldova. Moldova is uh, the uh, Eurovision neophytes country because they gave the world epic sax guy. That's the one thing Americans know about Eurovision. And they were very, (laughs) I liked what they were doing a lot. I liked their wacky polka with rock guitar riffs kind of thing. And I was very glad to see that the, uh, the world loved it too, or at least the continent. I kind of, I hope that somebody, see, I haven't checked. I hope that somebody sent it to Weird Al because I feel like <laughs> Weird Al would have loved it because that's what it had like when they were going like, hey, ho, let's go. I was like, wait, has Al done a polka mashup where he did I Want to Be Sedated? Because it would sound like this. <laughs> no, I don't think And that's a compliment, has. by the way. That is a huge compliment. So um, here's a fun fact about Moldova. Just, just, you know, while we're having fun. Um, Zdob Shizdub, who represented Moldova this year, um, represented Moldova previously, same group, in 2005, which was the first time Moldova participated in Eurovision, and then again in 2011, and then again now, which makes them the only group ever to represent their country in three different decades and all three times qualified to the grand final. Wow. Yeah, right? they go hard. And all three times they brought the fun. Yeah, I mean that's what that's oh, what I want. Fun from Eurovision, Eurovision country. Yeah, I I don't know what the panels were smoking, but like the uh, the people understood it. The people sure did. The people knew. Yeah, I mean, they went because other went than from, Ukraine, other than Ukraine, I don't think anybody else got as high a point ranking from the people. Yeah, and it's not like Moldova is like this country everyone has like strong feelings about. They're like Romania's Canada, but. Uh, it's it's not it's nothing about the country. They just the performance was that good. 
it's just fun. And there were so many, I mean, as we were previously talking about, so many of the upbeat fun songs didn't make it through the semis. We had a lot of sad boy songs. In oh, who's voting a for that? A lot of slugs. Some, uh, some, one of my Twitter friends said that there was a big section in the grand final that was five slow ballads and then Moldova hits you like a train. <laughs> yeah. What was it? Belgium and Azerbaijan. I saw, I saw the meme. I saw the train <laughs> meme with Moldova. <laughs> Because it was, it had been like however many ballads in a row, and then all of a sudden Moldova just came through. Yeah. yeah. Let me. I, I want to give uh, some shout outs to the mid table ones that I liked that no one really remembers, but I remember like, man, this is a good song. That's not going to win, but these are good. I liked Czech Republic. Warm. I was warm. They opened the show. Yeah, they're great. And it was like this was, and that was like a show opener kind of opening. It was there to kick us off. Had a lot of energy, but it was like nothing you'd expected to win but i liked it and portugal was ballad e but i actually like like that one a lot portugal is surprisingly delightful this year they were like maro and her coven of like witchy singers is a like her cozy coven is where i want to hang out yeah saudade saudade that's a some portuguese term that there's not really a translation for like loosely melancholy basically yeah It, it means clapping for yourself sedately (laughs) <laughs> it's just a thing they it. did if you haven't seen it they do clap a bunch there's a bunch of clapping in that song yeah i liked uh so i like portugal a lot estonia was the right note to end on estonia, I them. the yeehaw yeah. country western from the country whose name is literally east yeah they left us on a warm note i liked that they were the ending and uh iceland i liked more than i think most people did there was a uh, the, the three country singers yeah they were i remember like, them they're not right for Eurovision, and I wasn't surprised they didn't do very well. But I was actually I, shocked that they qualified. Um, pleasantly shocked. Yeah. I really like them, but I didn't think they were flashy enough to make it through. I thought they. Yeah, were, me neither. In a semi that had them and Portugal, I thought Portugal would get through and we'd lose Iceland. And I was really, really pleasantly surprised that we kept both of them. Like, who did we miss? We have we gotten everyone? Who, uh, we uh, have not talked about the Netherlands. I feel like they merit a mention. I thought they were pretty good. Uh, all I remember about. That one was that the girl looked very, very Dutch. She looked like the <laughs> Dutch. she looked like the girl with the pearl earring. Yeah, so, I really like the Netherlands. That's all I remember about uh, the Netherlands. Armenia. Armenia was the the one who like ripped a hole in her set, right? Yeah. Like, she, Armenia. She, what I like to call a mood. Uh, what mood is that? I mean, when she's like, if people like, if people don't stop talking to me, I'll snap, 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 and I'm like, yep, mm hmm. Oh, yeah, I I wanted to like her, I but I didn't. I don't know. I couldn't. I don't know why I couldn't connect with her. I just like I didn't think much of the staging. I didn't care when she ripped the hole in. I don't know why. Couldn't even tell you why. What were your feelings on Greece? I remember uh, liking Greece, but I don't remember it now. Oh, and I have to like find my notes on Greece to answer it's this called question. Die together. Oh, and she sang with the empty chairs. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that was one of those songs. I thought like one of the songs that sounded like very confidently hopeful like that's all i wrote i was like oh yeah like i remember putting that sort of in the same place as um czech republic uh, i was like yeah that's 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 the mood that i want to hear in 2022 things are bad but i'm confidently hopeful that things might get better the song oh everyone liked lithuania yeah that was a surprise to me didn't like lithuania I like Monica Luce so much. She seems like such a delightful human being and charming and fun to be oh, with. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember one. Me. I, yeah, I also didn't. I thought that I would like it. It seemed like one of those things I would get into. And then I was like, cabaret inspired. Sign me up. But no, I just didn't. I wish her nothing oh, but the I'm, best. But the song was cool. I didn't love, like the song. I did like the vibe and I did like the staging. I did like her outfit. Yeah. I saw someone say on Twitter, that she looked like uh, the cabaret performer in the space bar in some kind of sci-fi movie. Yep, I can see. She was, I will say this, I have seen some clips of her not on stage, but responding to questions, being just a general delight and funny and weird. And I liked all of that. I wish I saw more of that on the stage. I like her so much. I just didn't like her song. Oh, Poland, we didn't talk about at all. (laughs) They're more forgettable than the one we said was forgettable. You know something? That is not fair to Poland. They tried hard. You know something? Poland sat down at their staging meeting and they said, what special effects do you think are worth considering? There are no bad ideas. Throw it all out. Just put it all on the table. And people just threw stuff out. And then they said, yes, we're doing all of them. 
every single one of those things you said. We're going to put them all out there. I don't. Giant holographic heads? Check. Microsoft Word from 2000 Special Rain <laughs> Effects? Shaky yeah. Cam Lightning Stage? Yes. Dancing Dementors? You got it. Okay, look. So there are three. There are three that we now have to talk about. Okay. Let's talk about Serbia. I feel like Serbia has been the one that I've been quietly waiting to talk about that's not Ukraine. Good grief. That woman is who I want to be when I grow up. I'm 42. I'm going to get there. I love her so much. Just, you know what? Let's like, it's Let's do a song about Meghan Markle's hair. It's going to be about health. Mental okay. health and physical health and health insurance. The health insurance crisis. Let's talk about that on the Eurovision stage and let's do it in Latin. Yeah. And let's do that while we wash our hands in a basin. Brilliant. That, to me, that is, like, I watched it, I was like, that's is, that's Eurovision. There it is. And all the ways that you want Eurovision to be. Gosh, I love her so much. Didn't really get it. Oh. So that's interesting to me. I was, I was, it was like, everyone loves, I was like, that was just kind of a head scratcher to me. I was like, they're, they're saying something. And, you know, now I have all the context or something, but I didn't really enjoy it while I was watching it. I was just like, huh, they're, they're doing something up there. I was obsessed. That was, yeah. that was it. So this is really interesting to me because when the song first won Serbia's national final, I also didn't really get it. Like I watched mm. it. I, I, I followed a lot of national finals, but not all of them because I'm only human with a very only 20. Yeah, there are like 60 countries in Europe. Uh, yeah, no, I followed like more national finals than is reasonable for a human being who doesn't live in many European countries, but not all of them. So Serbia, I did not follow their final. And when they announced their winner, I was like, OK, I'll go watch that one. And I watched it and I was like, I don't get it. And there was a different one that um, was called Zorja, which had been a front runner. And I watched that and it was like a Balkan ballad, like a classic Balkan ballad. And I was like, that's gorgeous. Why didn't they choose that? Uh, they chose this weird thing about Meghan Markle's hair and hand washing. And I just don't get it. Um, why did this happen? And then the more I watched it and the more I read about it, and then the more I saw her perform it and talk about it, the more I fell in love with it. And the more I loved what she was doing. And it became one of my favorite, like weird, quirky Eurovision songs. But I was really worried about it because if you're coming to it fresh on the night, it's not accessible at all. Like Moldova is accessible. Hey, ho, let's go folklore and rock and roll. Let's do it. There's a lot of things that are accessible. Um, Serbia is the opposite. So it's interesting to me that Lena, you found it amazing. And Todd, you found it confusing. I don't know. Sometimes I like confusing. And this one, I was just, I was like, I, I didn't like, it didn't hit me or anything. I was like, you have to like, just kind of like st stroke your chin and observe it is how I felt about it. And that Lena, I, I, I can already see the look on Lena's face. But I think it's that I like artsy people that do weird stuff. Like, I grew up loving, like, Kate Bush and Bjork and them. Like, that's that's my shit. And she hit, like, that note, that kind of, like, I'm saying something here. You might not know what it is, but when you look into this and find out what it's about, you're going to like it. You're going to like what I put out there. And I did. Um, to that point, like, it just, it becomes that as an assumption, like, I'm like, uh oh, I don't get this. It's good. That's it. Like, I just kind of know when I don't get something on first blush, a certain kind of way, it just immediately connects. So that was interesting for me that Serbia getting that massive televote at the end, because I was sort of expecting it to resonate more with juries who had time to sort of engage with it and understand what she was doing. Um, and I wasn't, I was expecting more of the televote to sort of be like you, Todd. And like me, when I first saw it, and just be like, I, I don't get it. Like, what is she doing? And why is she doing it? So I was really pleasantly, pleasantly surprised, but also confused when the jury didn't do very much for her. And then the televote brought her up to top five. That was yeah, so they were in 11th. They had 87 points, 11th place um, prior to the people coming in. And then at the end, they went from that to... 312 vo votes and being in the top five, which is, yeah, abso absolutely wild to me. But um, I don't know if I look at it, I have to say like there's, last year I remember being confused by things that had made it as high as they did. This year I looked at it and I was like, no, those top five are definitely top five. Like none of these are bad. Like Ukraine, great. United Kingdom, I think is solid. Like I didn't super connect with it, but I get it. Spain, I loved. Sweden, I loved. And Serbia, I loved. 
of those five, um, I like Sweden's uh, the most. UK is definitely the least. I don't. Mm, mm, UK just did not sit right with me. I was expecting a lot better. As a just on that stage that night, I was not impressed. I yeah, I don't think that the performance, like having listened to other versions of that song, mm-hmm. like I just think it was not. I don't think it was staged great. No, the staging was incredibly bad. One of the worst of the night. And I think that was sort of the weakness, right? But like, I think that it it rode on a little bit of goodwill because I think at least a lot of the people voting knew what that song could be and knew how good he is as a singer. Yeah. So I, I think that he's I, that already kind popular. Of, yeah. So, but yeah, I mean like I don't having now had a chance to like listen to it and other stuff and, and having read what he had to say about it. I like, I, it makes more sense to me than it did immediately in the wake of the, of the thing ending, but Ukraine. Let's talk about Ukraine. We got to talk about Ukraine. Our winners. I'm completely satisfied. I, so am I. I, there are other songs that had it, had they won, like had Sweden won, um, like as a, as a, just on a music level, would I have been a little more happy? Maybe same thing, Spain, but just like the full package of Ukraine. Obviously, as we were talking about at the beginning, like that could come in full circle, but um, that's the beginning of our conversation. But obviously, there's people who are mad and there's people who say that it was political and it was a sympathy vote. I mean, I'm many people's resident Euro fan. So the number of texts and messages I got today saying, so was Ukraine a real win or was that a sympathy vote was many. Um, and the answer I think is both when you, when college orchestra won their national, won Midbeer, which is Ukraine's national final, which is a whole other scandal, new and scandal. If you're not familiar with that, we can touch on that if you like, but um, when they won their national final, I remember listening to, to Stefania and saying, that's winter material. Like this is going to be top five. Like, and that was before the war. The war. I mean, there was like rumblings of something happening with Russia, but no one knew for sure if, when, what, what it would look like, if it would actually, if, like, you know, if, you know, this horrible game of chicken would actually come to fruition. Um, that was pre, pre-war. And I remember just be like being blown away and being like, this is a win. This is winning material. Like this song could easily just sweep it. It's the whole Eurovision package. It's ethnic. It's interesting. It doesn't, I mean, like, I love Hold Me Closer from Sweden. Don't get me wrong. I love it so much. But Hold Me Closer could have come from any country. It could have been the UK's song, right? If America one day was so blessed and or cursed to enter Eurovision, it could have been an American song, right? It could have come from any country. Kalish Stefania could only have come from Ukraine. It's ethnic. It mixes modern and rap with this ethnic beat. And it's intimate and it's vast at the same time and it's not like 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 Todd was saying earlier it's not the most listenable song always 100 percent of the time but uh, i'm listening to it now and actually this is the jam like it is i mean aside from like the opening chorus it's hard to sing along to unless you actually speak ukrainian um though if you haven't walked around singing stefania mama mama stefania then i don't know what to do with you um but like if you're looking for a winner that feels like Eurovision, you can't argue with Ukraine. Yeah. The guy came out in a fuzzy pink 90s bucket hat, which that, that's exactly what I want from the Eurovision. And he busted <laughs> out a killer flute solo in the breakdown. The guy in a big fuzzy outfit dancing. Oh, man, this is exactly what you want from Eurovision, especially as an American. Yeah, but I think I think that's true. Man, the flute thing really does set it off, doesn't it? You're like, man, get Lizzo up on this stage. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. If you look at the size of the lead between Ukraine and the United Kingdom, everyone else, right? Mm-hmm. People ask me, is this a sympathy vote or is this a real thing? Right? Like, is this a genuine winner or is this just politics? And I say the answer is both. I think the size of the lead is political. I agree. The nature of the win is yeah. To me, to me, like. In a in a sane world without anything horrible going on, this is still at the very least like top, top three. Yeah. yeah. So you know it, it you can't feel bad about this, and uh, you know it's a like I said it's the Rocky Four. It's a of Eurovisions. It's a very feel good ending. Can't complain about that. And it's it's wild though also because I mean we were sitting there at my Eurovision watch party watching this last night. And it felt like this weird historic moment in a very unsettling way, watching Ukraine win Eurovision like this, knowing that the members of College Orchestra are heading straight back to Ukraine to be on the front line. 
Yeah, that they had gotten special dispensation to come and do this, and as soon as it was done, that they would be back into both. So, by the way, guys, got to get back to that war. Ugh. Like you, 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 you said it, Todd. You you asked me when they won. So what happens next year? No one knows. That's absolutely a- wild. No one knows. So Sweden actually offered to host well in advance, which is why for like a few weeks I was like, well, it's going to be in Stockholm no matter what. It's either going to be Sweden or it's going to be Ukraine. And either way, we're going to Stockholm yeah. or whatever. Um, so Sweden offered to host. Norway has offered to host. Iceland offered to host, which is funny because there was a whole Netflix movie about how Iceland yeah, they can't afford to, can't afford to host. Um, there's a rumor going around that um, whichever of the big five does the poorest has to host if the host country can't do it to sort of energize them, which would be Germany. But no one knows if that's real or just hyperbole. Ukraine hasn't said anything yet. My guess is that depending on how, how things go, they're going to be in conversation with the various broadcasters and whoever can be truest to Ukraine's vision and give them the most freedom to do what they want to do and represent Ukraine is going to be where it ends up. And we're not going to know about it for a really long time. Yeah. Well, like even if the war ended like tomorrow, how are they going to rebuild in time? Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm sure there's like places away from the front that they could host, but like they're the, where, where's the money. Right. Like it's a, it's a tough yeah. spot. So, for so, Zelensky did say that he, that he hoped one day that they would be able to host, but like, it, no, there's no, I just don't see there's any way that it could happen next year. I will also say, I just want to make sure to not, forget to mention this today the day after they won eurovision they released the music video for stefania oh my gosh i watched it um it like has some tissues nearby they filmed it it has subtitles so you can actually understand the whole song in english um and it's filmed in the ruins of oh my god russian devastation in ukraine wow it, I'm, yeah, I'm looking at it right now. Jeez. Everyone go watch it right now. Even if you've listened to the song and even if you've had a lot of feelings about the song, like I have for many months already, uh, you're going to watch it and you are going to cry a little bit because you're a human being with feelings. Wow, that's very powerful. For what is, you know, a, a jam of a dance song of, wow, I'm looking at all these empty buildings and rubble and fire. Wow. That's that's a lot, man. Yeah. It's a lot. And and this is, you know, coming back to the beginning of our conversation, you know, it's our silly song contest where we have people in wolf masks singing about grandmas and bananas. And we have, you know, hey, ho, let's go folklore and rock and roll. And then we have, you know, nonsense ballads and we have this and that. And then we have an anthem to a war torn country winning the day and taking it and then going back to fight in their war. And that happened on a national stage and we all got to participate in it. Yeah. And this, uh, they're going to be talking about this one for a very long time. This yeah, is going to I go actually, down in Eurovision history. Yeah. I, th- I found myself thinking like, you know, if in 50 years there's still a human race trotting on planet earth, um, this will be in the history books legitimately. Like people will talk about this as something that was actually relevant and i thought about it in comparison with you remember tom we were watching the the grammys and they were trying to do something for ukraine and like i appreciate what they were trying to do but like it just did it felt like it didn't land at all even though Zelensky was there delivering a message it just felt off and i know that a lot of people don't agree and that's okay but to me this is everything that the the, to me this was everything that the, the grammys could not even hope to achieve the power of going to the various different countries, I mean, during the jury voting, right? And the countries that gave Duplat to Ukraine and making their statements of solidarity. I mean, like, that's not nothing. That's something, right? That's something very real. Those are neighboring countries. Those are countries who are joining NATO right now. You know, those are countries who are part of this, you know, entire conversation. And if you think about, if you go back to the origins of Eurovision, like where the contest started, um, for those who are unfamiliar Eurovision started in 1956 as a response to World War II. It was basically the countries of Europe in in gratitude to having not killed all of each other, saying, let's come together once a year and sing it out in the hopes of never doing that again. And that's where Eurovision came from. It was an effort to create beauty and art and share a collective language of art in the aftermath of an incredibly devastating and terrible, terrible war. And to try to keep that war from happening again. And here we are all of these years later. And, you know, we, we can't stop war. War is going to happen, unfortunately. Um, and we can't prevent it. 
And we can't stand in its way, but we can stand up for each other and we can stand up for our neighbor countries and we can stand up for the countries who are part of our global community um, in this specific way. Yeah. I mean, sometimes that there, sometimes there's just this art, this beautiful ecstatic art that manages to really capture people's hearts in a way that like people's hearts want to be captured. But I, I think, I think the song takes it to another level. It's, it's weird. Like I, I can't even think of any, I mean, that's such an apt comparison to talk about the history of Eurovision. When I watch the music video today, um, I thought the only other thing that has made me have such a profound feeling like this was watching something fictional, which was the um, Bush Russian Doll season two, because they were talking about that's completely about like, uh, like a Russian person going back in time and like wanting to be able to at first change like their mother's life and stuff that they were dealing with, but then traveling even further back and suddenly being in like the, 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 the body and, and mind of her grandmother, like escaping Poland. And like, I don't know, like something about that hit me really hard. And then watching this sort of hit me in a similar place because all, of course all of these people are going to suffer and generations from now, people will still be talking about this. I just, I hope that this positive moment lasts. I hope it is something that has, as a profound impact in the long term as it did in the moment. I hope that that's a light that doesn't just flicker out. I, you know, going back to, I mean, going back to the question of, is this a real win or is this a political statement or a sympathy vote of some kind? And then going back to um, my, my Twitter friend, Dr. Ellie, who says the jury rankings ask which song gave the best impression and the televote asks which song made you feel something. You can call it a sympathy vote, you can call it a political vote, but the shape of that televote is because that song made people feel something. It made the people of Europe feel something powerful. And that's why they voted for it. And they voted with their hearts. And that, that's that's what the televote is supposed to do. Yeah, I, 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 think I agree. Gonna, I think that's a good note to go out on. Thank you so much for being with us, Nava. Thanks for having me. Uh, this was fun. No, uh, we are somewhat more informed than we were last year. <laughs> yes, this is a slightly better episode. And by that, I mean extremely better and not because of anything that Todd or I did. Yeah, thank you so much. And thank you all for listening. If you want to hear more of us, check us out on our Patreon where you can listen to our bonus episodes. This uh, this month we're doing Encanto. So. Good grief. I don't know. Just like take that out and just put in like whatever is the latest one. Who knows when you'll listen to this YouTube episode. Uh, but yes, all we right. have bonus episodes. It costs you a dollar to listen to all of them. And uh, we always have a a poll going for whatever is the upcoming episode. So feel free to go and vote in our poll for whatever it is this time. All right. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.